Hiya Tan, hope you're okay. Uh, so this is lesson three on evaluation skills and remember this is all about preparation for the assessment that's coming up next week. So today I'll be showing you or giving you a another extract. This time it's a bit longer than the ones we've, we practiced in the first two lessons. Uh, but although it's longer, I hope it's not, uh, I hope the, the language is, is quite straightforward. So it's not too tricky, okay? So the objectives, as usual, uh, we're going to read uh, an extract from a fiction text. Okay, so this is just a, a short clip from a longer story. We're going to identify areas, or, or you're going to identify areas of the text that are relevant to the evaluation question. So finding those three or four things that really uh, are useful to answering the question. And finally, to create a spider diagram or a mind map as preparation for answering an evaluation question. So we're basically repeating lesson one of our evaluation uh unit but rather than me showing you everything today you're going to be much more independent okay so the question that uh, you're going to be answering is here in the extract that you're about to read the writer has attempted to show what life is like for teenagers how successful have they been okay so this is a this bit of the, the story is showing um a couple of teenagers going through like a fairly ordinary typical teenage experience and your and your task is basically to look at how the writer has been successful in showing what life is like for teenagers in this particular extract before you read the extract you need to get into the right mindset okay so you're going to have to get yourself ready for this you know that you're going to evaluate this extract so that means reading with a critical voice in your head so be ready to be a little bit judgy okay you have no idea what it's going to be, uh, so you have to be ready for anything. Right, so the extract is in uh, it's from it's from a book called Girl Online, which you may be aware of. You might have even read, and it's from the very first uh, chapter. Okay, uh, you have this in your Google Classroom resources, uh, so you can have it uh, in front of you, or as this video will work through, I've got it in the video as well. So I, whatever is easiest for you. Find it as a PDF in Google Classroom with this lesson, or you can use this video. Let's get started. So I look at the text from Elliot and sigh. In the time I've been watching the dress rehearsal for Romeo and Juliet, three hours of my life that I will never get back, Elliot has bombarded me with hundreds of random texts about Shakespeare. He's supposed to be doing it to relieve my boredom, but seriously, does anyone really know, need to know that Shakespeare was baptised in 1564, or that he had seven siblings? Penny, could you get a shot of Juliet leaning out of the trailer? I quickly grab my camera and nod to Mr Beaconsfield. Yes, sir. Mr Beaconsfield is the Year 11 drama teacher. He's one of those teachers who likes being down with the kids, all gelled hair and call me Jeff. He is also the reason our version of Romeo and Juliet is set in a Brooklyn ghetto and Juliet is leaning out of a trailer rather than off a balcony. My BFIS, best friend in school, Megan, loves Mr. Beaconsfield, but then he does always cast her in all the lead roles. Personally, I think he's a little creepy. Teachers shouldn't want to hang out with teenagers. They should want to mark books and stress about school inspections and whatever else they get up to in the staff room. I got the steps at the side of the stage and crouched down beneath Megan. She's wearing a baseball cap with swag printed on the front and has thick, a thick fake gold chain with a huge fake gold dollar sign dangling from her neck. There's no way she'd be, de she'd be seen dead in that outfit anywhere else. That's how much she loves Mr. Beaconsfield. I'm about to take the picture when Megan hisses down to me. Make sure you don't get my spot. What? I whisper back. The spot on the side of her nose. Make sure you don't get it in the picture. Oh, right. I shift to one side and zoom in. The lighting from this side isn't the best, but at least the spot isn't visible. I take the picture, then turn to the other stage. As I do, I glance out into the auditorium. Apart from Mr. Beaconsfield and the two assistant directors, all of the seats are empty. I instinctively breathe a sigh of relief. To say I'm not very good with crowds would be a bit like saying Justin Bieber isn't very good with the paparazzi. I don't know how people can actually perform on stage. I only have to go up there for a couple of seconds to take a photo and I feel uneasy. Thanks, Pen. 
Mr. Beaconsfield says as I hurry down the steps. That's another cringe fact about him. The way he calls us by, all by a nickname. I mean, seriously, it's okay for my family, but not my teachers. Just as I get back to my safe spot on the side of the stage, my phone bleeps again. Oh my god, Juliet, you used to be played by a man back in Shakespeare's day. You have to tell Ollie. I'd love to see his face. I look up at Ollie, who's currently gazing up at Megan. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks, he says, in the worst New York accent ever. I can't help but sigh, even though Ollie's dressed in an even worse costume than Megan's, making him look like a cross between a Jeremy Kyle guest and Snoop Dogg. He still somehow manages to look cute. Elliot hates Ollie. He thinks Ollie's really vain and calls him the walking selfie. But to be fair, he doesn't really know him. Elliot goes to a private school in Hove. He's only seen Ollie when we bumped into him on the beach or in town. Shouldn't Penny take a picture of me in this scene too? Ollie asks when he finally gets to the end of his speech. He's still talking this fake American accent, which he's been doing ever since he got the part. Apparently all the top actors do it. They call it method acting. Of course, Alls, says call me Jeff. Pen! I put down my phone and run back up the steps. Can you make sure you get my best side? Ollie whispers at me from beneath his cap. Here's one. Has stud printed on the front in black diamante. Sure, I reply. Uh, which side is that again? Ollie looks at me like I'm crazy. It's just so hard to tell, I whisper, my face flushing crimson. Ollie continues to frown. Because they both look good to me, I say, desperation setting in. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? I can practically hear Elliot shrieking in horror. Thankfully, at this point, Ollie starts to grin. It makes him look really boyish and way more approachable. It's my right side, he says, and turns back to face the trailer. Is that, er, uh, your right or mine? I ask, wanting to make double sure. Come on, Pen, we haven't got all day. The big shield calls out. It's my right, of course, Ollie hisses, looking at me like I'm demented again. Even Megan's frowning at me now. My face burning, I take the picture. I don't do any of my usual things, like checking the lighting or the angle or anything. I just press the button and stumble out of there. So... The extract that you've just read, the writer has attempted to show what life is like for teenagers. Well, yeah, it's not full life, is it? It's just this little uh, snippet of one particular moment in the the lives of these characters. Uh, but how successful have they been? So your task now is to complete the spider diagram. And I've kind of set it up for you. Uh, you can kind of build on it from how I've done it, or you can start from scratch if you want to. But the things I want you to really think about are, first of all, I'll just get my uh, pen. You've got to think, well, what aspects of teenage life are shown in the extract? Okay, so I think there's probably three. Uh, you might have spotted four, but I think three is enough. So your first job is to kind of work out what are the different aspects of teenage life that the extract is showing to us. Okay, and then once you've done that, once you've identified the three aspects, These highlighters are awful. What is the point of them? Oh, let's try again. So, let's try that. So, the first thing you need to have done is identified three aspects, okay? And then, for each of those aspects, collect uh, as many quotes as you can, okay? So, relevant, but they need to be relevant quotations, okay? And that's, that's kind of exactly what we did back in lesson one. Uh, earlier this week. All right, guys, so once you've completed that spy diagram or mind map, uh, can you just take a photograph of it and upload it to Google Classroom so I can see that you've completed the work? Okay, guys, good luck with that. Uh, take care.